Hello there and good afternoon. Welcome to uh, another one of our webinars. We're uh, very often asked what's going on in the Spanish property market, something that we obviously keep our uh, finger on the pulse on, and also what's happening with the banks. As ever, it's uh, a moving feast in Spain, and our job is to keep up to speed, obviously, with uh, changes, amendments, changes of policy. Uh, there's a lot of consolidation going on. So that's the sort of stuff we're going to share today. Firstly, an apology for the cancellation last week, but I completely put my back out. Had a had a pretty painful week or so. What I went to see my expert to get it sorted. Sorted we are, and we stood up on the health report. I was hoping to have joined us today our brilliant Spanish solicitor, who's based in Cordoba, out there in Spain, uh, with his translator. But unfortunately, he's just come back from holiday and taken a, a bad insect bite. He's okay but he's uh, ended up in hospital. So we're, we're going to run it slightly different, but I am going to come back with something with Antonio because I think you'll find it quite refreshing. Uh, it's a change of voice and you get the real context again in terms of what we're saying here. So you're welcome. Spanish property and banks, expert strategies revealed. Off we go. Bit of an introduction. So we know the sort of form that we're going to have to this webinar. Um, it's another season has passed. Uh, nothing materially really changed. It's quite a moribund uh, market in that it's not going anywhere. Uh, but it's a difficult market for those properties that we specialize in, i.e. pre-2009. There are com two, com two or three completely different markets in Spain. There's the Spanish market and all the different ramifications and nuances there. And then in the holiday home, there's the newer stuff and the older stuff in simple terms. Uh, we're going to go through a bit more detail on the and a recent email we said in terms of the hardening of bank attitudes. And we'll get a little bit of context why that is. Um, obviously, the crash was now 16 years ago, but still there's a legacy of it because the lending was so poor at the time. Um, but banks have had enough. They're moving on. Um, still a lot to plough through. We make reference in a minute to a bit of research that we did. And it's uh, it's not easy but they are quite fluid, they want things resolved, they're not soft, that some things they're toughening up on in fact, but we'll give you a bit more on that in a minute. I mentioned the Spanish solicitor there, Antonio, we wish him well, but he is, uh, he is a real find for us because we're, we're very commercial in our approach and he is not afraid of any form of litigation, be it defending or attacking in, attacking in the main. Uh, and he's a, he's, a, he's a really good guy, but we'll, we'll save that for another day. I'm also giving you a bit of an insight we have a, a good friend in Spain, Mark Elliott, who's a brilliant mortgage broker, uh, on what the current mortgage market looks like. Uh, that's important, especially when we look at the values, because it's got to be, it's got to have a good uh, financial availability, if you like, so that properties can be bought and you get then that movement in the market. So it's not bad, but it's absolutely full of compliance and it's quite tough to get mortgages. They're there, but it's quite tough to get hold of. Also, I'm going to make reference to a bit of work that Antonio and we are doing which is with floor clauses. So uh, something that we're early days for us, it's been around for a while, but we're just sort of really getting our heads around it, how we market it. It's done on a no win, no fee basis, and it's basically uh, mortgages that were badly written. And I'll come back if I may a little bit later, because it's another challenge that the banks face in Spain. So in respect to the Spanish market, it's another season's come and gone. Like I said, there's nothing really much to report it's just very very stagnant it's uh, it's it's that sort of difficult that um, a lot of spanish purchases are now coming to the market mopping up the holiday homes on urbanizations and developments and stuff like that because it's affordable it stayed at that sort of level uh, the properties are, are an age where the price is starting to creak a bit and we're not really getting a lot of new people into the market younger people aren't typically buying holiday homes They've got that great ability to travel within reason wherever they like, and it's almost like they can't get their head uh, around you know, committing to buying a holiday home. It's a massively changing world. So it brings the market tighter and tighter, and then for it gets more competitive. And you, you know, the, the, the state of disrepair of some of the pre-2009 properties is pretty, uh, pretty difficult to watch. I was down at a development about uh, six weeks ago in Casares, and the, the outside was crumbling, and uh, we didn't realise that 
until we went down to see the property for the client. It was the same day that the bank's value arrived and it was deemed unfit for a mortgage. So it's, it's, it, 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 this, isn't, this, this is giving an, an insight into the market we work. It's not negative, negative, because there are options here. It depends what you want. And it's very tough to watch what's going on. And with that sort of market, you get what I'd call almost like the wrong type of buyer, the real tire kickers that have got the choice of everything, but don't really commit or take people to the wire. The number of times we've seen people going to the wire in terms of purchase uh, of a property and then drop out. Which is which isn't which isn't healthy, isn't good. It's a bit of a, excuse my French, a bit of a shit trick, really. And but there's a lot of it going on. One of the processes we undertake with the bank is that we will get the property back to the bank after the property is sold, working on the basis it's going to be um, nothing else to pay. But it has to be sold, and it's not just as easy, even if though you've got a great outcome at the end, to get to that sale. So. It's, it's tricky out there. Um, and there's a lot of, still a lot of people, we're going to talk numbers in a minute, there's still a lot of people hanging on for the miracle that it, one day they will rise. They, they're going nowhere, I'd respectfully suggest. We've been through, his, you know, we've been through the horrible crash, uh, the absolute uh, values going through the floor. Then we've had really low interest rates for eight years, nine years, maybe more. And now we've got a little bit of a rise on in interest rates, but it's still relative. We're all of an age where we remember the 15% interest rates. It's still pretty affordable, but we're not really going anywhere. It's just not. And if you own one of these properties, and I, I offend you, I don't mean to, but they're not really attractive in today's world. So consequently, within reason, you're going to get what you're offered for a property. Then you've got that offer, you've got to make sure that uh, manifests itself in a sale, ultimately. And this is with the backdrop where we're dealing with the banks as well. And they have crazy ideas on some of these valuations. They're, they're nuts, absolutely nuts. Again, we, we think it's worth 120,000. Well, it's 80,000. And uh, we've got a bit of the eight, we've got a bit of 75,000. So that suggests it is around the 80,000. It's, it's, it's a very uh, frustrating market we find. Um, and it, it, if you're in negative equity, then you've got the backdrop, obviously, of dealing with the banks, and that's where we where we come in. But what what I'm saying is, if you're looking for that great hail mary, it's not going to come. It's it's just the way it is. Um, and we've got you know we, we, we're going through the issues here because I want to get those across. My my thing is always to say, right, if you've got a problem, you recognise it, you do something about it. That's the big call. What we do have, if you have a property out there and you're not sure on the value uh, because the state agents are uh, liars, because um, they'll just tell you what you want to hear, we have a we can uh, get indicative figures for you if you want to reach out to us. If you've got a negative equity position and you're not sure of the value, there's a man that we can speak to out there. <coughs> Excuse me. He's his own man, but he does a lot of work with the banks. He has a very good uh, handle on market value of properties across Spain. So if ever at any point you want to reach out to us, can you give us a heads up on that? We can reach out to him. He's a man called Jason. Uh, he works extensively out in Spain. And we can reach out to him and get an idea. We do a bit of work both ways with him. So he's sort of a nice way I was asked. So that, that offers there. But it's, it's pretty difficult. And there's a lot of misinformation uh in terms of just for instance estate agent windows are crazy they're, you know, they're, they're not selling there i mentioned there the mortgage market and that's pretty important because that's okay really um because what's going on there is that uh, the banks have got their act together after the crash it's taken them a long time it's cheaper 16 years they are now uh, not very good English, they're now proper banks, they're back at it. But with that comes the, the faceless entity, uh, all the compliance requirements, which are huge now. Uh, back in 2006, eight, it was like the Wild West. You've got to have proof of income. You're only going to get 70% loan to value. And there are, there are, there are pretty strict terms now. Uh, and obviously the property's got to be valued, etc. So it's it's really compliant, which it should be. But also, then very restricted. They, as ever, bless them, the Spanish are quite slow in processing anything. But I get this firsthand. So I have uh, that colleague, uh, the solicitor. We have our colleague, Jason, on the ground values. And then we've got a really good, we doubt the best mortgage broker I've ever come across uh, in Spain, a gentleman called Mark Elliott. And the, this is the dynamic we work, keeping up to speed. 
we uh, talk at least, we meet at least every couple of months because it's very important. <coughs> great side is, great side to that is we had a chance to go to Spain, but it's quite warm where our solicitor is in Cordoba, 42 degrees in a suit, not, not much crack, but it's very important we keep up to speed so we can relay this information. Um, and it's, it's, it's sort of a lot, a lot of instances, what we're trying to do here is say, right, if you're going to make a decision, we'll get you the information, but make the decision because we don't want to leave things to the next generation if they're not right, etc. So that's why I think it's very important to keep everybody updated as much as we can. I mentioned earlier that we've got Spanish uh, purchasers coming into the market, and we're finding that particularly in the region down in the bottom of the Costa del Sol there, past Estepona, uh, De Quesa and uh, Manilva down there. A lot of Spanish workers and uh, expats are buying properties that were sold for about 250,000 euro for around 90. Something that's a bit that's manageable in terms of where the Spanish are in their income levels. And strangely enough, quite a few are buying them to go and work in Gibraltar. It's the closest nice-ish area that you can uh, travel to Gibraltar. Um, but they're in the market, so it must uh, mean that the prices are about right in the in the light, local mindset. There's another development you go up towards Murcia and you've got Corvera. I was going about Corvera. And you've got a uh, pretty big urbanization. There's 600 uh, residential units. There was a golf course, which is now a nature reserve. Um, and civil enough, nice enough, tidy enough, very sort of standard Spanish uh, of the time build. And again, the Spanish are moving into that area there. They've also got the upside that that's now the main airport in Corv, just outside Corvera for Murcia. So again, we know we know these bits that are going on. I actually have a friend who's got a place there, but uh, that's another day's work. The other one, which, and again, try not to keep it negative. If you don't go to your property regularly and you're not sure about what to do, be very, very careful. There's a huge rise in squatters. Um, and this has been almost like augmented I don't want to say encouraged, but the Spanish government, not a political statement, a very left wing, and there's huge uh, human rights issues that they're bringing into play, not least on tenancies, and people are going nuts about it. So the Spanish are going clear nuts about it. Uh, and it's very difficult to uh, get them out. You, if you have a squatter, you're not selling that property in any time soon, because you've got to, uh, best you've got to go to court and everything else, and they... The law is on their side uh, in a big way. Can be sorted. Uh, there's there's the legal way, and there's a there's another way, not illegal, but basically squatting. It means that if you vacate a property and somebody can get in it, they can use it. Flip side is they go shopping, you can go back in it, but you have to be there obviously to do that. That's a simple way. But be very careful because we've had a number of sales. <coughs> uh, going through the process that we do to eradicate uh, negative equity, where the best it's been delayed and sometimes completely scuppers people's attempts to get out of those mortgages and uh, properties that don't work for them. Quite a bit of negativity there, but it's not a lot to report, but it's these, these nuances, that, like I said earlier, that we like to keep on top of and report accordingly. So that, that's how we see the market at the minute. Flip side of that, the banks, like we say, they're back in. They're um, mortgaging away, but mainly, mainly new builds, mainly properties 10 year old and uh, over a uh, bit not as xenophobic as it sounds but sometimes the uh, spanish build quality especially back in the day wasn't great so they're pretty keen on uh, lending but on on quality properties proper bank the overall problem and negative equity for banks isn't going away quickly when we first started back in on this at about 2015 so nine years ago we estimated in Spain, we did a bit of research, uh, and we estimated there was about 63,000 properties that we could recognize, and that wasn't, that wasn't uh, exhaustive and complete. Using that same uh, sample, if you like, uh, we've got another research, a uh, bit of research commissioned there, and that found out there's still about 30,000 rows left. It's not a small problem. And I say that is not complete and exhaustive. So for the banks, it's not gone away. And suddenly we get into a stage where uh, terms are coming up, um, people are aging, 
uh, unfortunately there are deaths, divorces and everything else and not the best property. So the, the banks have never really gripped it. They're better, they're stronger for about 12 years after the crash. They were absolutely useless, didn't know what to do. Um, they were in a terrible state, obviously, but now they've got their act back together. This, this is a frustration for them, which is why uh, there's a lot of loan sales going on. And the loan sales are seeing them, they just take a swathe of a book and they just pass it on to uh, what are essentially known as vulture funds. Their job is to buy it cheap and make some money on that. You'll never know the price they paid for it because you, despite what people say, oh, I think they've only paid this, you don't know, you never know. They'll never release those facts. And all the banks, and all the banks. So, uh, But it's a, good, it's a quick way for the banks to take the pain, clear up the book and get the get it out of the way from <clears throat> so they can get on with a new job of being a proper bank and getting proper mortgages as they see it, a new fresh business they have started to do their chasing in the uk that did take a while for them to get their act together again they started it poorly they say there's something they got something about foreign banks where they uh, despite all the legislation at hand they're not very good at cross-jurisdictional uh, pursuit if you like and but they're stepping that up Loan, uh, the loan, loan sharks, vulture funds and the loan purchasers are very good at that because that's how they operate the services of the world. Huge multi international companies have that ability. But again, the banks are trying to clear that out. The other, the other one, a, a recent concern is because I know especially a lot of uh, British and Irish people hold Savadell mortgages. And this is one of the things I've, I've been discussing with the solicitor. Uh, Savadell looks like they're going to be taken over by BBVA. And BBVA, the biggest Spanish bank, and it's, uh, I think there's something like five times the size of Savadell. And uh, I will come back on this when I get to sit down with Antonio, and I'll actually recall just a short thing on it. Uh, and it's, it's, I have a slight concern because BBVA are completely different to Savadell. Savadell have been a bit of a bad bank in that they bought the Halifax book, they bought you know all the Lloyds and everything else, they bought all the rubbish uh, and bought that in, tried to manage that out. They do their own stuff as well, uh, particularly up in the Mercia region around the, the Gulf resorts. So there's a lot of, I um, wouldn't call it quite delinquent debt, but it's pressured debt. There's a lot of stuff coming to the end of its term. Since the crash, if you took a mortgage in 2007, if it's a twenty, it's a twenty-year mortgage. It's coming up to you know, it's only got a couple of years on the term, things like that. And BBVA generally are very strict on their T's and C's, and didn't got caught in the crash, but not badly because they had uh, they had certain standards and things like that. So they're a lot harsher on their terms. So it's a couple of things we're seeing that, for instance, they will not relent on a mortgage going from interest only to repayment. Uh, that's the way the contract says, it's 15 years up, you've got to revert back to repayment or start repayment. And sometimes that's a very rude awakening to a lot of people. One instance we saw a, <coughs> excuse me, a repayment go from 430 euro to 1950 a month on a property negative equity. Strangely enough, that gentleman came to us and we managed to resolve it for him because he, he, was, he had outlays of 1500 euro a month plus the management fees, etc., and just, it was crazy. We did a deal with the bank, sold it, uh, and in simple terms, called it a day, and uh, that was us. So they're, they're, they're really strict on it. I, I just want to see how they play the uh, integration of the Sabadell book, and we'll, we'll keep you posted on that as we go along. And and the other thing is that you know, we're finding, and it, this may, and again, and no offence meant, but they've had enough of messes. They've had every excuse in the world. We were the Savadell bank manager a few weeks ago, and there's a, a very low mortgage repayment. I think it's about eighty-three pounds a month, and somebody's told them they can't keep the repayments up. But they, then they got their bank statements. <coughs> they've got every benefit coming in, and all this sort of stuff. And they've had the, the actual phrase was they've had enough of messes, and they're going to get brutal here. I think, um, and. If that comes then into, it sort of manifests itself back into vulture funds buying these books, they don't miss anybody. You know, they'll do, they'll be they'll be commercial, they'll do deals a hundred percent, but if you if people lie, mess them about or anything else, they just they just take people out of the knees because that's what they do. Again, that's our job to protect you and keep people aware. 
So uh, as a general thing, the market is tightening in terms of, again, the old holiday home market, which is where we, where we specialize. They in turn have another problem. So we, we did quite a bit of work, although this opportunity for, for clients is now closed in terms of the redemption of uh, lost deposits. The new, uh, it's been going on for a little bit, but it's becoming more and more publicized is the fact of floor clauses. Now, typically, uh, these were Spanish banks rather than, say, Halifax's and Lloyd's and everything else. So even though Sabadell now own the Lloyd's book, they also wrote their own mortgages. And a lot, I think the estimate was 70% of the banks back in the day, wrote mortgages in such a way that you were not allowed to take your interest rate below about, say, 5%. Excuse me. Uh, and then so when interest rates went right the way down to half a percent, and in some instances it was negative for when the banks were playing silly buggers, you never got that benefit. You were always on 5%. So the Supreme Court of Madrid has decreed that that becomes what's called a floor clause, and you should get, uh, you should be paid retrospectively in, in on that recharge, sorry, that overcharge, if you like, plus interest accrued. So we've just done a couple of these with our uh, solicitor in Spain. And we found that the sweet spot that really works always round is any mortgage for about 150,000 euros should be looked at. We look at the other stuff, but it's, it then becomes the economics of a case. Uh, but I say we do this on a no win, no fee. So if anybody wants us to look at a mortgage, you must have the deed because it has to explain what the terms are. We can calculate within 24 hours whether you're eligible for a claim and roughly how much it will be. Uh, it's a relatively quick process at the moment. So if you, even if you had a mortgage up to 2019, say, but sold subsequently, it, we, we can go right back on these. So it's a, it's a problem for the banks. It's an opportunity for our clients uh, in terms of potentiality of getting some sort of recompense for, <coughs> excuse me, which is essentially um, mis-selling. So keep your eye out, we'll, we'll keep you in touch in terms of this, and as I say, we refer to them in English as floor clauses, uh, and he has a Spanish version, which I can't remember, so sorry about that. And we did mention there about bank consolidation, because a lot of that's been going on. Uh, it used to be, uh, especially when it all went wrong, the Bank of Spain jumped in and told a few, a bit similar to England, when um, uh, Lloyd's had to take the Halifax debacle under their wing and stuff like that and there have been all the all the cahas have been taken away there's only a few left really they were the small almost like local bank banks and let's say there's been this continual consolidation continual consolidation now what what the, what this does do so we're going to keep an eye on what happens to the book and how it will affect individuals right but what you're finding with this and with loan sales they make decisions at a level in an ivory tower somewhere with no thought or consideration for the mortgage holders, the individual mortgage holders. So for instance, we've had a couple of instances there where people wanted to retain their mortgage, even though it's in negative equity, uh, but it was sold and it was ending its term. And so the uh, vulture fund just said, get out, that's the end of the mortgage. No, there's no, no negotiation. And so it's very important that we keep an eye on this thing because the macro level will be swathes of debt they will do different things with without, like I say, any, any thought to what, what the makeup is that sway, that certain swathe of debt. So it's going to affect genuine mortgage holders, I think, going forward. And, and again, it's the backdrop of, you know, do you want any more unknown in terms of where you where you are, what you've got. Try not to, I really am trying not to make this as negative as it sounds, right? But there's huge, huge shifts here. And I, I'm, I'm a great believer if there's something up down the road, attack it rather than wait for it to come and hit you. Excuse a bit of the water. And that, like I said earlier, will um, also then come into play with um, the T's and C's. End of term, uh, any bloom payments and maybe at the end of a mortgage um, uh, and also uh, interest only to, to repayment again uh, a real bugbear and so I think the 
and he, 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 suddenly you create these monoliths, these huge organizations, and they are faceless, absolutely faceless. Before, in the good old days, at least you could ring them up, speak to an individual at the bank, and they'd lie to you. <laughs> they'd tell you you couldn't do this, couldn't do that, right? Okay, So you, you must do this, must do that. Usually just obviously about them, nothing to do with where you are as the customer and client. So these faceless entities, going back to that thing where I'm saying that they've got no real worry about the individuals involved in these sways of debt as i call them it's going to make it pretty tough and obviously it's the same as the uk you're not getting the high street presence etc etc so it, it, it's tough enough and it's it's it, but obviously this is where where the world goes you know we've got uh, ai coming through taking out uh, lots of levels of uh, management lots of levels of employees etc so it is going to go that way but that comes hand in hand with any consolidation because they're going to save money. So that was all pretty negative. I'm going to keep it quite short today. There are options. We we help hundreds of clients. I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a chat in terms of what we do across the board here. But I thought I'd get on with the facts first. Essentially, uh, the values are stuck at best. If you're going to sell, you've got to take the offer. Obviously, nothing ridiculous, but uh, you know, don't watch... Um, what is it called? Place in the sun, right? The, the bidding and stuff like that is, is, is silly. Some, there's some crazy offers, you know, people trying to get 25%, 30% off. And sometimes people are having to take it to get rid of the places. Uh, the Spanish are in the market, so we think it's more or less properly on the bottom. There's a bit of movement up and a bit down, etc. But they actually want holiday homes for their own homes. Uh, the new stock is very expensive. Uh, Post-COVID, obviously, when our building costs got absolutely walloped uh, for no other reason than they did. Uh, but they're, they're, be they're better quality properties than the pre-2009, obviously. Um, and that's the banks, that's the view the, the banks take. You've also then got the backdrop that the banks have had enough of their bad book. They've, they've really gone uphill and down, down deal with it. And you're finding a lot of impatience with the new personnel in the bank because they don't understand what went on. It's not their gig. It wasn't their fault. They weren't there. And they just don't see uh, any logic. There's no compassion in the decision process. But they have the backdrop of being becoming more and more impatient. And that's primarily driven by the, the fact that the courts still are as slow as can be, and a repossession in some areas in Estepona Court can take up to four years. That, in a very strange way, is leverage uh, for us in terms of what we do, because we go, right, okay, this property is 100,000 down. If you want to repossess it, we know it's going to take you four years, or can we sell it, but that will be us, and that's the process we take. Uh, it's, it's a lot more to it. Our solicitors developed a process over the years where we're looking at things like the 1135 Civil Act and uh, a mortgage deed is 40 pages long. And if need be, our solicitor will go through every page to make sure there's, and there always is, uh, somewhere where we can force that uh, full and final approach. The sale equals the full and final. But then it's our costs, which sometimes are cheap, but given some of the amounts we save people, it's, it's a small price to pay. So, the, the, you know, it's, it's, again, it's that backdrop. It's, it's not great for the banks. Why are they being like that? Well, they're a bit cheesed off because the courts are, you know, here in the UK, you can come and lift a property, a buy-to-let property after three months. And it happens. And if uh, you go past six months, I suggest, on a domestic mortgage in the main, you, you won't have a house. Over there, it's still that thing where it drags it out, which is why there's still 30-odd thousand units, at least in Spain, they've got to, got to go through some sort of process here. And they, it's, it's, it, they, they can't get to that final tidy up. And that, in turn, coming back to a bit of positive, is the opportunity for people then to uh, get through this because it's the leverage back on the bank. Um, and uh, it, and it's, but it's that mix. We have to find, we, we work at a certain level. For instance, Sabadell have a, uh, a big office in Sevilla there. We've been there a few times, right? And that's where we're getting the... The, the current thinking and they, they, they change quite regularly and it's very important to keep up to speed on this which is why we uh, share this with you um, so it's it's really important that we keep bringing this stuff to you uh, excuse me I'm just checking my notes so there is also finally a very limited uh, ability to remortgage in Spain because again the values are where they are the mortgages are tough enough to get uh, and 
I'm I think I'm of the generation of a lot of you uh, that you know do we do we need more more debt round us? But 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 there are ways to resolve this. Always even we we deal with some of the saddest cases where you see partners die and everything. There's always a way as long as you, the dear client, are reasonable in your expectations and uh, you're in undoubtedly most likely successful. We see very successful people make one mistake and that was to buy the wrong property with the wrong mortgage product. You, a lot of people go, it was missold. By today's modern UK standards, undoubtedly, will you win a mis-selling case in Spain and Cyprus where we deliver it? Absolutely, you will not. No chance. Absolutely no chance. Uh, so it's it's that it's that pragmatic approach to what is a difficult market, what is a difficult attitude to banks. If you need to exit, then that's the sort of work we undertake and do. So I'll draw to a quick close here because I say not a lot of good news, but it's a bit of an update. And a, a, those things are there to 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 offer as well. So uh, if you want some sort of valuation, give us a shout. We'll see what we can do. If you want a mortgage broker in Spain, we'll, we'll introduce you. And I will get Antonio once he's got over his hornet sting back into into action. I think you'll enjoy him. He's a, he couldn't be more Spanish if he tried, but he's a, but he's a, he's a very good guy. So... Um, I'll end on a couple of bits here. There's our two websites. There's EU Property Solutions, obviously, that's us here today. But we have our, and we understand fully that everything's about trust because you've been wronged, most likely wronged by a solicitor back in the day, a notary, whatever went on. Um, and I want to sort of just extend a little bit on terms of what we do. We, we, we assist um, over the years, thousands of people have helped genuinely in terms of the businesses we have and we're extending it out into other products but we have bell and company which is bellcomp.co.uk which deals with business debt now, the reason i say that it gives you hopefully a bit more idea of the size of us it's not one man rabbiting on like this it's we have 24 people here uh, and in leads uh, we have 250 live clients at any one point so we're, we're i like to say we're big enough but small enough to care. That's really important. I don't want thousands of clients because that's that'll be the quality would go. So what we do is we've got a, we've got a good size here. It works well for us. We always buy it to be better, uh, but it gives you a bit more of the of the group sort of size. So there's going to be a couple of uh, domain names there if you want to click away on those, have a look round. Uh, and if you've got any specific inquiries, there's an e uh, email address here popping up, uh, which is my personal email. So if it's, it's if it's relevant to what we're saying here, uh, ask away. Generally, any other inquiry might have to pass to our leads office because that's where most things go on there. They're the, they're the guys that operate for us there. Uh, but if you want to, email me. It's tb at eups, eups .co uk. And we've done it, and we're doing it till the end of September. And we've had a half-decent uptake in terms of anyone that comes to this webinar, obviously doesn't just sign up, but comes with a possible inquiry for us, which ultimately might result in you becoming a client. Unfortunately, you have to pay fees for that. We'll give you 15% off if you use the reference TB when you come through. And uh, say, a few people have taken that up, not hundreds, but a few people. We're running to the end of September, but that's up to you, whether you want to do that or not. So I'll leave you on with the usual contact details. Hello at eupropertysolutions.com and our usual telephone number. Staff are empathetic. They'll, they'll, list, they'll take your details. They'll find out what you're about as a person, which is as important because this isn't nice for anybody. Uh, we'll give you straight talk advice, which some people don't like, but that's how we operate. We, we haven't got time to, uh, to for, for tire kickers and messers. You know, there's a lot of people we need to serve here when you've got 250 clients. But we're very empathetic here. You know, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of trouble in instances here that come, come across our door here. And when you think you go back, like I say, and it's 2007 to today's date, 17 years is a long time for anybody to, to have a mortgage wherever they are. You know, all, all the you know, worst scenarios that can happen do happen in that time. So it's, 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 it's tough enough. Not very happy webinar, I'm afraid, but uh, we're going to do a little bit next time. I think we're going to come back with a lot more case studies, a lot more details, especially on the negative equity side, because that's where, that's where it's not getting resolved and people... Uh, we get the trust issue and it's almost like that um, helping to make decisions for people and that isn't in a controlling way but it's sometimes that little bit of a nudge that's what you should do given what the payments are a year 
back to the old chap I was talking to earlier, you know, not 1,950 euro, you know, just short of 25,000 euro, uh, well, it's nearer 30,000 by added everything up and no return for it. So it's, 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 it's uh, straight talking and we'll get you right. Anyway, rattling on now. Thanks for watching and uh, speak to you later. Thank you. Bye.